I hear a lot of bad advice on uh, online about people giving advice about what you should carry when you're hiking or outdoors camping and just what you need to protect yourself. There's a lot of people saying 44 Magnum is the minimum you should have when you're outside or if not you're an idiot because you're going to get killed by a bear and blah blah blah. Or you need 10 millimeter because people in Alaska carry 10 millimeter and that's the, the round of choice for uh, grizzly hunters or whatever. Or maybe there's even some people saying Hey, I wouldn't trust anything except 3-inch uh, magnum shells, or, meh. Yeah. The thing is, I feel like that's all bad advice, and people get all, really worked up about this, and in reality, it's, uh, this is something we argue about because we, we enjoy this hobby. Um, this is not an exercise in practicality, and we're not trying to be the most pragmatic and pick the best choice, really. Uh, and I think we need to realize that sometimes. If we really cared so much about safety and things like that, this would be a video on the top 10 safest cars to avoid getting killed by a deer and a deer strike on the way out driving to the campsite. Because you're more likely to die in a deer accident than uh, by a bear while you're out hiking your local trail. So, now that I said that, I'm going to go into it really quick. Uh, if you just want the final thoughts, I'll put that at the end of the video. Click the little chapter down there that says final thoughts. So, quickly, going into this, uh, bear spray. There's a lot of studies comparing that people reference when comparing bear spray against various different calibers. The problem with that is uh, the criteria they use for success in like, a lot of these studies for bear spray, they don't include things where people failed to deploy it. So if someone was able, unable to get it out of their pack, uh, they were unable to figure out the, the mechanism for operating it, uh, they didn't include that. So those were not included, they just took those out and it was only cases where they used it as prescribed. Uh, that they use those cases and then they judge how successful it was in those cases. Unlike all of the studies on guns, where if the user was unable to deploy it, unable to shoot it, where they missed, um, whatever reason, uh, those count towards the failure. So that kind of deflates the numbers of effectiveness for a lot of firearms um, in those type of studies because those are rightfully included. I think if you're unable to draw your weapon, that's a, a valid failure. Um, but for whatever reason, maybe they have different criteria or criteria they're trying to measure or whatever conclusions they're trying to draw from the study. A lot of times with bear spray, they don't include um, those failures to operate as failures. So you kind of have inflation numbers for the bear spray and then you have depressed numbers for firearms in these studies. So just you have to keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, we'll go into, now that we got the bear spray out of this discussion, but before we go on, I think this is a good choice. If you don't care about firearms, if you don't enjoy the hobby, if you don't enjoy shooting, um, there's no reason to get a gun. Get your bear spray, enjoy yourself, learn how to use it, and you turn off this video and that's it. But if you enjoy guns, you enjoy the hobby, things of like that, then if you have a wide variety of guns, you're trying to figure out what the best gun is for you to carry out while you're hiking. Um, Amelon did a, a kind of a case study where they aggregated a bunch of different cases where different where, uh, rounds were used against uh, wildlife and they kind of tried to determine what the best caliber was and which calibers worked and which ones didn't. Uh, just from my reading of that, kind of the conclusions I drew from it were the best calibers were the ones that were actually fired effectively against the wildlife that was uh, posing danger to the user. So, for example, the 9mm, uh, all of those, they had 100% success rate in the cases they found. Um, even for larger bears like grizzlies, the 9mm was enough. And that's because the users of the 9mm were able to hit their target. Uh, unlike a couple of them, they found some 357 cases where uh, it was not successful and it was because the user couldn't even, or they didn't hit the target. So, does it really matter if you have a 44 Magnum or a 10mm? when you don't know how to shoot them, or when you're not unable to hit a moving target that's rushing at you, uh, no. You should go with the guns that you're able to fire. Um, so going along with that, you when you're thinking about what the best option is, uh, we're not talking about hunting. Obviously hunting is completely different. You don't want to just be unloading a bunch of 22 into a grizzly bear, because eventually it will kill them. Um, there's ethical things, there's a whole different discussion there, but we're talking about deterring an attack. And if you're trying to deter, deter attack, the gun you should go with is the one that you're effectively able to use 
and the one that has enough ammo to give you um, the most possible chances for um, deterring that uh, attack. So if you're trying to choose between say two guns, a 44 Magnum and maybe like a, a Glock 19, uh, I would take the many rounds available with the Glock 19 versus six with a gun that I'm not very proficient with. I don't really have the time, money, or I guess um, maybe even the will. Um, if I had the will, I could make the, the budget work for these, but I don't train with the 10 millimeter or the 44 very often just because it's expensive. Um, it's kind of uh, difficult to find the time because you can't practice. A lot of places are not going to let you do quick draw or even like uh, drawing from a whole store or a pack at a range. A lot of places prohibit that and they don't let you do uh, rapid fire up in many places. So I have to drive out pretty far to do any type of practice and I just I don't have the motivation to do that a lot of times. So I go with the guns I fire the most which is the Glock 43 and the 1911 so the 45 auto, <coughs> 45 auto because I've used those for years and I'm confident that I could hit a target with those and uh, both these have enough rounds where I think I would have enough chances within those few seconds to hit the target. So even though I spent a lot of time reading online about the best calibers and I ended up buying this 10 millimeter because I read about how it's the gun to go with uh, when you're in Alaska or things like that. I live in Washington. We have black bears and uh, mountain lions. Uh, tell me, I'm not saying 10 millimeter is overkill, but it's it's not going to do me any good if I'm not able to use it effectively. Uh, and that goes with whatever holster system you have. Um, this is the only one I use, and I use that because I'm familiar with it. So. I carry my bear spray in here. I carry any of these I carry in here. I'm used to drawing from this. I'm very familiar with how it feels, getting into it. Um, it's about being effective and being able to act quickly under stress and kind of facing imminent danger. So, sorry my camera died there, but we were kind of wrapping up anyways. Um, I'll quickly do the final thoughts here, and that'll be it. And you can start roasting me in the comments. I know this is going to piss a lot of people off, and people have these really, I don't know. Anyways, please leave a comment with your thoughts. Make sure to like, subscribe, or dislike, whatever. Um, yes, so final thoughts. If you don't care about guns, you don't want to get into guns, you're not passionate about guns, you don't enjoy guns, just go with bear spray. You'll be fine. This is more than enough. Uh, there's studies showing it is effective. If it's more effective than firearms, uh, we don't know. We won't know until there's a good study that kind of compares those apples to apples. So, go with bear spray if you don't care about guns. As far as what the best caliber is, uh, the thing is you shouldn't really be asking yourself what the best caliber is for uh, protecting yourself. You should be asking, what caliber are you best with? What gun are you best with? Whatever gun you're best with is going to be the best gun to take with you on the trail. Um, if you're not training with 10 millimeter, then don't take 10 millimeter. If you're not training with a 44 Magnum, don't take a 44 Magnum because Bill on uh, Hiking with Guns Facebook group said that's the minimum you need and that's just a bunch of BS. If you can't shoot it, it's no good. Uh, there's studies showing that 9 millimeter has been effective against even larger uh, animals like brown bears. And there's studies showing 44 Magnum, pretty much every caliber is effective at deterring uh, attack most of the time against even a larger game most of the time if you're able to hit the target so go with the gun that you have where you can hit the target uh, in my case it's this Glock 43 and this uh, 1911 uh, and 45 auto um, going to further along kind of with that same theme go with the system that you're used to using uh, practice with it a lot of times you can't practice with these type of things at a lot of ranges, so you might have to go to maybe public land or maybe a private range or find some place where they'll let you kind of do quick follow-up shots and you can do this kind of practicing that's more, um, uh, that's kind of will be more similar to what you would see if you're actually out hiking. Uh, use the same gear, practice with the same gear that you're going to be hiking with. Um, in my case, I use this Hill People Gear chest bag 
I take with me hiking all the time. I'm very familiar with it. I'm familiar with how it feels. Um, I don't have to put a lot of thought in. I'm not searching for the things uh, when I take this because I've been using it so long. I use the same uh, pack for any gun I carry uh, and I also use the same pack with uh, bear spray. You should take a gun as well that you feel comfortable carrying hot. I think that's condition one. I, I forget the different conditions but you should have a round in the chamber. If you're not comfortable with a certain gun, say maybe you're not comfortable carrying Glocks uh, with a round in the chamber, uh, then carry a gun that has a physical safety. For a long time I carried the 1911 just because I liked having that physical safety and uh, it made me feel a bit safer when uh, I was carrying it hot. So go with the gun you can carry hot and you feel safe. As far as everything else, don't spend too much time thinking about this. In the end, uh, there's a lot of things that are more likely to kill you than a bear uh, when you're out hiking. Uh, take into consideration where you live. Uh, who cares if people in Alaska are carrying uh, Glock 20s and Glock 40s and 10mm if you live in, I don't know, if you're hiking around LA or if you're hiking in Phoenix or the desert or you're, there's the bigger risk is getting uh, bit by a rattlesnake. Uh, think about where you're at. Think logically and enjoy yourself out there and be safe. There's not a whole lot here. Don't overthink it and don't listen to these uh, people that just regurgitate their BS thoughts on forums and stuff. So, like I said, make sure to like, subscribe, give me your thoughts. Uh, I'm excited to see all the hate I'm going to get for this. So, alright, I'll see everyone out there.